last one. Maybe that one, you just kind of run it off. Um, by the way, Francis is going to be trying to get into the meeting. So if you're a. I don't think we have a waiting room on. Mm -hmm. well, okay, she might show up. I texted her. Um, okay. But but it's the forum is I'm not really interested in and I probably wouldn't have come more than once if I was just get to know your neighbors. We want you to know who's your neighbor. But if we were talking about what's the green way and I had a conversation with somebody about that who was in the meeting that helps me know that neighbor and address get my little bit of understanding of the government stuff um, so that it's not you know if we want different people to come that's one of the things we have to do is make a space for them without disrespecting the need for the work that john and beth are particular and susan are doing with the city dan I be careful. Well, I, I've already voted, so it doesn't really matter. Um, on the Greenway, um, I mean, I, I, a perfect example is like that. But I, in a perfect world, we would hold a meeting along the Greenway, <laughs> right? And be like, "Here's the Greenway. <laughs> this is what right. we're talking about." That's what I'm saying. We could we could be in a meeting that's <laughs> you know? like going out there and doing the mulching. You know, but, you know, <laughs> like here's what a setback is. Here's the top of bank. Here's the property we're talking about. You know, yeah. I mean, it's it's so much. E I mean, I don't know. It, it's easy to money more to quarterback this stuff. And having been, uh, you know, uh, in the deep end of of that, I definitely don't want to rewind the clock for, for damn yeah. sure. But um, uh, I, I guess it, it, I, I look back at. Um, are we still being recorded for some reason? By the way, I just yeah. started recording us. You right. didn't record oh. the beginning of the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I look back at the past two years of meetings, and some of them got very cantankerous with certain folks, right? I think that part of that is COVID. Um, you know, that one of the byproducts of that uh, whole process was there's an anonymity about this this screen. You know, I can I can tell each one of you off on the screen and have no problem doing it. But if you're standing in front of me, that is a lot harder to do. And the further this screen gets for me, the, the less interaction you know about me, the easier it gets. And yeah. so it's a lot harder if I see Claire every month at a at a at a at a um you know a coffee or a happy hour to get really down in the weeds and get personal. And, and so we we lost that uh, um with, with COVID and people got a lot more heated than they probably would have. And it it it, it damaged and burned bridges. And I'm not saying we go back and, and rebuild those bridges to a certain degree. But it it tore the some of the the already frayed aspects of our, our neighborhood apart, and this allow would something along those lines would allow us to kind of rebuild that a little bit to build that social capital back up, so that if you do have a problem, you can reach out to them in a friendly way rather than you know some nasty anonymous email or some crappy post, uh, Facebook post or you know something along. Yeah, that's I was exactly having that experience too, and I also think that we. As a result of our conflict, you know, with with Harry, um, that we become very kind of scared to allow people space to talk. Yeah. You know, so our, that that means we jam too much into the meeting. That means we have a lot of rules about who can talk when and how, and that really shuts down um, any you know open participation and and connection. Hi, Francis. We see you, or your name anyway. So I think that's probably all of the discussion we have time for. I just wanted to introduce those uh, ideas for us to start playing around with and sh maybe shifting to uh, explore, be more exploratory. Can I just say one last thing real quick, please? Um, we do that happy hour thing with the DPLC every month. Um, it's very successful. We raised a decent amount of money. Um, nothing that's going to break the bank, but we do raise money at it. We have door prizes, but we also pick a business and patronize them. They love it because we're bringing in 30 people. I mean, that's pretty good on a Wednesday night. Um, you know, and if we're picking, if we're already kind of focused on small businesses, it doesn't require a whole lot of work on our part, just showing up and buying a Coke or buying a beer or whatever it is. Um, so it doesn't require a lot of our volunteer time, you know, so yeah. we, we don't want to pick things. You know, if I'm putting it on Susan's hat, like we don't want to pick things that sound really great and it requires a whole lot of effort and no one does it, <laughs> it just pisses off everyone. <laughs> so like, let's pick things that are within our bandwidth that have high impact, low 
uh, volunteer uh, uh, scope and try it out. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah, I agree. Tio Pepe's has a nice uh, party room that we could maybe hang with, not to mention margaritas. <laughs> okay, um, let's move on now. Thank you, everybody, for your thoughts on that. So I'm going to apologize to Brenda. I put you in charge of this next item and never asked you if you wanted to do it. So I guess I'll ask you now, and that is I'll reinstate our monthly check-in and our commitments. Do you want to talk to that or am I unfairly just dropping it in your lap? Well, you put it at the bottom of the agenda that you sent out so people can see that. I certainly didn't assume we were going to ask people to walk through that and respond at this meeting, but I just, I really thought at the retreat, we said, one of the things that we keep doing is we keep dropping the ball and not following up with people, not holding people's feet to the fire, blah, 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 blah. And um, we haven't we haven't attended to what we said we were gonna do. Um, we can, we're the board, we can say, well, that was a nice idea, but we're not gonna do it. That's the um, somehow a way of keeping, and maybe that helps balance the governmental focus. You know, some of us have other things we said we were going to bring to the board. And if we were regularly checking in on those things as good use of board time and business time, that gets in the agenda instead of other things I, I i don't know it just is i don't know what you want me to do with that john well i, I actually put it in item number five the item the in the things that we agreed to do at the, the board retreat um for what they're worth i i do think we have a challenge in that um my preference would be that more board members took on more things and these are things that folks said they wanted to take responsibility for and it's easy to say you're going to do it if we never say well how's that going so i think we are committed to once a month we would ask folks what progress have you made on those things you want to do and i probably at the same time we should ask are there some we should drop some we should add so but, so the discussion would be are people wanting us to do that? And I would assume that goes <clears throat> at the top of the agenda. So you, if there's something going on, you can add it to the agenda as you've done your check-in. That could work. But I wonder what other people are thinking. Can we just go around and Susan and then Michelle? Yeah, I have done everything I have on my list. My list is to do two plastic events a year. I did one yesterday. My list to do two newsletters a year. I did one. I also did a survey yesterday of all the people that came to it. 80% of the people that told me how they found out about it was the print newsletter. By the way, there were all people that had not been there before. Cool. So the print newsletter is powerful. And I don't think this board pays enough attention to it. And we kind of piece it together. And, you know, we're, we're begging for content. Um, that's coming up, my friends. I don't know if we're going to use the, um, we, we have to have one more publication out by June. I had hoped to get the newsletter, I mean, to get the postcard done uh, or by the end of June. And that's from financial reasons, Brenda, I heard the question. Um, the, the thing I would say is, um, I'm sorry, lost my train of thought. That net is, we had a lot of people. Oh, I know what it was. We may as the CAC, which is the other thing I'm, I'm working in concert with Beth and um, John on for ARCO is um, that we may need to use, do a publication for the um, May meeting that we will have that we will spend talking about the neighborhood plan. So if we do that, then we can use the funds we have before the end of June, which is when we have to have done two print newsletters and we will have done two print mailings, not necessarily newsletters, but mailings, so we will have met the needs of the city. Um, but then I would suggest we want to have another one planned for early September at the absolute latest. So um, that's my update. So I, I'm not asking everybody to do an update right now. 
I, that's not in the time of the agenda. It just hasn't been clear. Let's. What do we want? I know. To that was, the question is, do we want to do that? I, at least that's that was. This is a discussion about how we act as a board, not me forcing us to do the agenda list. So my suggestion would be that if anyone has an update on the things that are in their list, they should announce it, including if they aren't meeting their commitments. That would be my suggestion, as opposed those, to speaking to all the individuals. And that those should be like a part of the morning, the announcements as we start at each meeting. I, that's fine. We, we blow our, we, we ignore our agenda timing anyway. So why does it matter? I mean, it's now eight o'clock and we're on item four, maybe five, maybe. I just, I, I struggle because I feel like we're spending a lot of time talking about things that frankly could have been an email. Uh, Michelle and then Beth, just quick. Yes, up, no, run away. Uh, I think it would be good to do a check in at the beginning of the meeting, but really, really brief. And whoever is, if John or whoever is facilitating it, make sure that, you know, you got a couple of sentences to talk about whatever you can and make them follow up with an email if there's, if it's more complicated. But if, I mean, for me as a new person, it would be nice for me to hear what, what all balls are up in the air that people are working on. Okay, thanks, Beth and Claire. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. I think it can be covered under number two, committee reports. And uh, again, make it brief. We talked about some of the things already. There are a lot of things on this list of commitments and we can't possibly get into all of them. Yeah, I agree, Michelle. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, and I just wanna say that we have 700 people opened the e-news this last month and we have you know 1200 on the mailing list. So. One one issue that we do need to discuss probably it could be just me and Susan, but how do we strategically use these different forms of media um, uh, to to forward our work? Uh, thanks, Dan, and then John. You say Jan? Oh, I forgot Jan. Sorry. Yes, I said Jan. Okay. No, I I appreciate everybody's comments. And uh, especially to translate our sort of check-ins with each other as board members, but having those check -in, those check-ins go out to a wider audience as well. Uh, the beginning of the meeting, I think I agree with just about what everybody because uh, I'd sort of like to know more. I've got some ideas. Maybe I'll share a little bit later that would fit into kind of a check-in sort of thing too. So I think a check-in is important. Thanks, uh, Dan. I don't have my hand up. I know I'm going around the board asking about this issue and giving it back to John to do what he wants to do with it. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I, I guess I'm kind of agnostic. Okay. <laughs> that's good. Okay, that's the discussion, John. Well, um, my part of the discussion would be to suggest for efficiency that we ask you in advance to give us what you're into and you send it to us via email and share anything you feel we need to discuss. That way we can share the information in the agenda and then if there are items that need discussion, we can take them up afterwards. Because I agree if everybody reports at the meeting, the meeting's gonna be a lot longer, but we need to get that information out. So it sounds like there's no opposition to try to find a better way to do this. We just have to figure it out. I, I heard what I heard was um, a willingness to be a little bit more systematically accountable for what we said we would be doing. Okay. And that's diff a little different than just tell me if you need anything talked about. That's not quite what I said, but we'll figure out how to make that work. Okay. Okay, we are 12 minutes behind, but 
at any rate, um, Beth has agreed to facilitate this part of the meeting to discuss selecting a new board co-chair. Claire sent out her resignation and now we need to figure out what we're gonna do about it. Beth. Okay, thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank Claire for the work that she's done um, in the short time that I've been on the board. I've seen her really commit, make a commitment to this organization. And I think volunteering to keep doing the newsletter is a huge task. So thank you, Claire. Um, I think the other thing is that the charter states that we have co-chairs of the neighborhood organization. And so unless we changed uh, that we would need tonight to elect another person to be co-chair with John. And I thought before we take nominations, John and Claire, you might talk just a little bit about what the responsibilities are of the co-chairs so that whoever uh, throws their name into the hat or whoever is elected will know what it is that they're getting into. Well, you know, I think partially, thank you, uh, Beth. Um, this might be an opportunity to set up new patterns. One of the reasons why I wanna exit is because we have working patterns that aren't working for me anymore. And so I'm hoping that um, uh, a new person might have different preferences on how to do it. Um, right now, and for instance, John and I were talking about what are we gonna do about this? And he thought, well, one suggestion we had was um, we could rotate it around more. It doesn't, you know, and it doesn't have to be a long term. It could be three months, you know. Um, a lot of organizations with co-chairs have, you know, six months, you have three months and then you move to the senior chair person and then, you know, like that. So we might want to uh, be more, a little bit more creative about how we address it. Um, the work that I've been doing is mostly um, uh, being a sounding board for John <laughs> and, you know, to... to um, I respond to emails and to, you know, that come through the, the internet and I um, collaborate with John. We sometimes we have like a two hour meeting to work on agendas. Um, and, uh, you know, I appreciate that he is like so on it to keep all of that together in his head. And I feel like I haven't been willing to step up to carry my weight in that. Um, and so, that's all I gotta say. <laughs> John? Um, I, I too need to echo the appreciation of Claire working as hard as she has and with me. And I would say that if the issue is me, that I could step down too. So that's, not, that's an option for you guys to consider. I'm not insisting that I f finish out to March if you think that's a better way to go. Um, I, I did suggest the idea of having a rotating co-chair, at least one of us. Um, and I think it would have to be at least for three months and perhaps four, because it takes a while to get up to speed. Yeah. But if someone wants to take it on till next March, when we have our next election, or two people, that's also a possibility. Um, a lot of the information that comes to us comes to me because I've been around for so long and that may be part of our problem, but nonetheless, um, I tend to be the contact person and we need to do a better job of having people send information to the co-chairs. There's a mailing address for the co-chairs that uh, we should encourage people to use so that both of us, whoever they are, both of them, um, are more equal, I guess, for want of a better term. But yeah, the, the biggest challenge is putting together the agenda, which is sort of the culmination of all that's going on. And it does take um, an hour or two for Claire and I to agree what's on the agenda after we get input from you. And I'll be honest, it takes me about five or six hours to put the agenda that you actually see out. And if we do move our meeting to a later time, that's one way that that could be smoothed out, but I've said enough. Terrific. Is there anybody that has questions of John and Claire? 
or comments on what they had to say. And I cannot see you, so. Jan, Jan has his hand up. Okay, Jan. You're muted, Jan. Yeah, it's kind of getting dark. No, I, I enormously appreciate Claire and John and everybody, actually, everybody here is on the team as well. I, I am not volunteering to be this. It's not, not what I want to do. But I would like for, for John and Claire to somehow commit as to being mentor, you know, and, and explain and be there for uh, whoever does end up becoming a co-chair just to realize, and I, I think anybody who knows the people here would expect that there'd be support and help to figure this thing out. But I would just like to make sure that, that that's understood, that whoever does take this on for whatever period of time is gonna have support and, and a help. Uh, so that's my comment. I'm not going Thanks. anywhere. I do intend to be available for that. And I just don't wanna be in the front, front row anymore. <laughs> yeah. I had enough tomatoes. And, and I Thank guess I that. would add, it, it's my intention to step down either next March or the following March as co-chair. Um, it's time for me to move on too. Okay. John, can you help me with hands raised? Um, because I can't see those. Okay. Dan has his hand up. Well, I, I just heard uh, uh, John kind of slyly enter, uh, uh, suggest stepping down tonight too. You're both not allowed to quit in the same meeting. That's just a rule. Um, so, so I'll be the first to say we don't accept either of your resignations. You're here for, for the long haul. Um, what I would say is, uh, you know, it. we also have to try to find a way to make it less work for, for the, it, it shouldn't take 10 hours to put on a two hour meeting once a month. Um, and it, maybe that kind of goes back to what you were saying, Claire, about saying no. You know, I, I, if you want to spend five hours, I mean, you know, more power to you, but um, it just seems a little bit abusive. Yeah. Uh, you know, and that the, the community is, is just kind of taking advantage of the relationship here. Um, and that, that seems disproportionately wrong. <laughs> um, so I, that's, that's my initial thought is, is that I think that if maybe there's a way to, kind of downshift out of the formality of this stuff, which takes away some of the need for so much focus on structure and the time to come to, to devote to that off, off put some of that into a more informal process. Um, and if people really feel gung ho about having something um, in a formal process, maybe we would do that instead of every month, or every two months. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know what I, I I'm just spitballing here, but it just, neither of you should have to 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 do that on the on the regular um and i'm i'm thankful that you have obviously um but yeah it just seems obtrusive <laughs> anyone else okay so um, I think those are all good suggestions and it would be something that perhaps John and whoever the person that's elected could have a conversation about and bring it back to uh, the, um, the full board. I, um, it, it, five or six hours planning for a meeting is a long time. Um, okay, are there any nominations? And again, I need help with hands. Yeah. I don't see any yet, Beth. Yeah, part of me didn't want to describe what we do because I think it would scare people away, but <laughs> <laughs> nobody wants to sign up for that. Um, <laughs> but well, I, I think there's a way to delegate. <laughs> yes, there's, there You're are elected, different ways to delegate. do it than we have been doing it. There's an uh, op opportunity for creativity here. <laughs> right. 
Well, I I don't think I'm going to make a, a nomination, but I think everybody here is capable of doing of doing what needs to be done. Is there anybody is there, that is willing to put their name in the my hat? Next question: Is there anybody that would self-nominate? Because if not, I think we should have a conversation about: Do we need a co-chair? Do we change the the charter? Michelle's hand is up. <clears throat> Either that or she. <laughs> were you just stretching? <laughs> it's I think like you just sitting at a. Oh, oh, I thought oh, that initial oh, tear, oh, and, oh, oh, and I was like, oh, no, I she was asking a. Me. I just thought. <laughs> sorry, Michelle. Um, the other, the other thing that we might try is, I mean, I'd be willing to do it once, but not ongoing, and I can't do it in May. So, so Michelle, would you be willing to do it for, a, say, a three or a four month period of time? It's it's going to be a little bit rough with me because I'm also being the secretary. So which means then somebody needs to take the secretarial position as well. Plus being new, that's a big, that's a steep learning curve. And I have grandkids that are like my number one priority in life and they're going to be out of school soon so I'm going to move them around a lot but um so it's not a real good time for me would you do it once I if could do somebody it once. else took minutes <laughs> huh? yeah if somebody else was take minutes <laughs> okay so that that would be an option is that we could do it one I have to say that part of the job is is about um, paying attention to not only our community but the city and all the stuff that's going on. Just having your finger on the pulse and paying attention to what's going on, um, you know, and 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 that's a really valuable skill to learn by doing this job. <laughs> Dan has a hand up. Dan, I. I'm willing to uh, to help, and and what would be interesting is Michelle, since you're the you're the secretary, I'm the treasurer, so we both can't do that job at the same time. So maybe I become secretary while you're co-chair, and you become treasurer while I'm. <laughs> so we can just trade our our uh, Robin to Batman uh, uh, scenario here. Um, the the thing for me is my my schedule is cyclical throughout the year, so. Right now, it's it's a lot easier. Summer gets easier. Fall is a nightmare, so I, I'm not reliable in, in in the fall. Uh, uh, phone calls take longer. Text messages take longer to respond. So it means that at short notice, I can't attend. And so, you know that that puts a lot of pressure on John or whomever to kind of pick up the slack. Where again, if we're trying to be fair and not abuse the 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 the, the folks who are volunteering their time, um, then that needs to be kind of put up front. Um, so yeah, there's so that. So Dan, would you be willing to take it on for five months through the, the rest of is. the spring and the summer? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. Yay. So we'll call it. Do we need to take a vote? Yes. Okay. All those in favor of electing Dan as co-chair for the next five months, raise your hand. And again, I cannot see. Uh, let's do handle. electronically, folks. Electronic race. Use the reaction green, red. No, yellow. Uh, raise your hand or green, red. Yeah. So, other than Dan, everybody's hand is either up or it's green. Yeah. And I guess you have agreed to serve. So, you're, you're voting yes to him. I am. <laughs> I, weird to vote yourself. So, I'm just. You know, abstaining. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. <laughs> um, and just to be clear, so we're talking about two to uh, uh, September first, which is fine. Um, and then um, the only other aspect of this that get, can get a little woodgy for me is obviously I'm a planning commissioner. So if there's something that comes up that is a, a butt heads with that, I have to conflict defer um, to that. That being said, I I've seen what the schedule is for the rest of the year. It doesn't look that contentious. That um, other than the neighborhood plan that that potentially would land on our doorstep, but it's there. So, 
Great. Thank you, Dan. Oh. Fantastic. Well, we have another task, and that is now that Dan is the co-chair, um, theoretically, at least, we need someone else to step up to be the treasurer, which is a fairly minimal task, except that we have an overdue report that needs to be sent to the Secretary of State, but that's not a big deal either. Would someone be willing to step into Dan's place? Did you hear Dan's suggestion about how he and Michelle would deal with that, John? Well, then we'll have to pick someone to replace Michelle to be secretary. Uh, I think that the idea was uh, for me to do both because my understanding okay. is that it's a secretary, you know, basically according to the charter, it's a secretary treasurer position. Right. So you're willing to do that, Michelle? Um, with some help. <laughs> yeah. Michelle, okay. just, so you, just so you know, I've spent a collective 20 minutes in four months on uh, on being uh, the treasurer. So outside of walking the bank and signing a piece of paper and then giving John the code so that we could make a, a pay, pay a bill, that was the sum total of my responsibility. Okay. <laughs> and so, and yes, you probably right. know how to do Secretary of State reports, so that would be good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I do, actually. <laughs> I move we elect Michelle to be secretary treasurer. Is there a second for that? Second. Uh, greens or hands? Okay, that's unanimous too. Well, thank you everybody for that discussion and uh, we'll, we'll move this forward. Thank you very much. And thank you once again, Claire. You've Yay. dealt with me for a long time. And vice versa. <laughs> okay. And I will continue to. Thank you very much. Okay. Well, I'll teach you the secret handshake, Dan, next time we meet. <laughs> cool. Okay. The next item is one that we've been working with as well, and that is changing our board meeting date. Thanks to everybody for filling out the... Um, survey that I sent out. I sent you a, a copy of what how it turned out, but I'll bring it up and put it, share it on the screen for just a minute. Um, as you can see, the one time where everybody is available, even if even if though it may be a need be, is as Brenda predicted, the fourth Wednesday evening. Fourth Wednesday evening. Fourth Wednesday evening. Right. What yeah. that proves is that two different surveys said the same thing. Right. So the, the problem is, is that our meeting date moved. So we had to find the day of the month that worked for both as early as the 8th and as late as the 15th for the general meeting. And Jan, you said you could work it out. That's okay. Okay. It's okay. So without objection, our next meetings and those from now on out until further notice will take place for the board meeting on the fourth Thursday, Wednesday, excuse me, fourth Will Wednesday. someone be sending out new updated invitations, please? Yeah. That'd be great. Thank you. And just and in will case the you, general meetings be on the same dates? Yeah. They're, they're, the, the, the problem is the only day we can meet at the annex is that second but we um, still haven't made a decision about whether or not we're going to be meeting live or completely go Zoom or hybrid. So I don't know that we necessarily want to make that be our decision point. Well, until we decide we're not going to meet live, I think we have to keep that option open. All right. It does mean Misty is never going to be attending a general meeting, which is, I think, against board policy. So we might want to just check that. Well, that's something we should have to deal with, yeah. But if we're going to meet in person, we have to have a place to meet. And the only place we're aware of is the annex. And the only day the annex is available to us is the second Monday. So that's but a good still, There's still Iris Place. We need to look into that. And, and that certainly is worth looking into. I'll, I'll put that on my to-do list, Jan. Especially Thank if you. we've got the owl. And regards to Misty, Misty joined herself as a board member here, knowing that Mondays were when we had meetings. So the fact that her 
availability is not, I mean, I'm not sure we need to move just because she can't meet on the general meeting night. Further discussion is needed, obviously. Okay. Um, where's my agenda? Okay, so we're on to item number eight, volunteer library event. Claire, I assigned this one to you. Yeah, I saw, you didn't ask me either. I know. <laughs> so, um, so last year we went to their uh, open house thing and it was really, really hot out and it was on the asphalt, but we hung out, we hung in there and I've, I thought it was a good thing to do. Um, people from the community came, they kind of wandered through. We talked to other people in other booths. Um, and I think that we're trying to have a more presence in the community. Maybe, you know, the different projects can show up and have a presence at it. So I think that we should do it. And I wonder, and the main thing is who wants to staff it if we do it. So it's on June 24th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I believe that's a Sunday. I'm not sure. Sunday, Saturday or Sunday, obviously. Yeah. I'll look at that. It's a I Saturday. think it was a value it's too. It's a Saturday. It's a Saturday. You're right. Um, it was beastly hot, but that's one of the reasons they're moving it earlier on. So it won't be hopefully so hot. But we did have a, a chance to talk to people and some of them were very interested in our neighborhood plan. And we talked about that for a while. I think it's a great idea. And we can have handouts there for people to take away to the copy of the newsletter, uh, any other information that we want people to know about. Right. So I guess my question would be who is willing to at least tentatively commit to participate? So I'll, I'll be the point person, John. Okay, good. So I can probably done? help you, Claire. Okay. I'll plan to be there, but I'm also going to see if, since I saw it, if I can get River Song to show up, it would be nice too. Yeah. Sure. Indeed. Yeah. To have your own uh, table or a presence or at our table. No, no, not at your table. I have to have our own table with cookies. Well, oh. I'm going to be at your table then. <laughs> <laughs> but I posted in the chat the things that I put down. I don't need to re regurgitate them, but I think it's great. And Yeah, um, agreed. Um, we do need to re, re, we need to reinvigorate our intention of spending our money down so that we do have 10 yard signs to share, um, Brenda. So that's another to do. Um, item number nine is really going to be uh, an ad hoc event. We're discussing the neighborhood plan review because most of what we know, we learned at two o'clock this afternoon. Oh, but really? it, um, we, the three of us are part of a subcommittee of the community action team that's looking at the neighborhood plan. The way that we set it up way back when, when we approved the charter is that we're going to do outreach to the public. We're gonna get that feedback and then each of the two neighborhood associations is going to make a recommendation to the CAC. Um, and then the CAC will make a recommendation to the Planning Commission. And that is supposed to happen. Uh, we're supposed to have that. We tentatively agreed to make May the meeting where we um, have a session where we get feedback from the public. There's going to be another session at the the um river road the north eugene high school cafeteria excuse me on may 25th from 5 30 to 7 30. they are also um pushing out a um meeting kit so people can hold meetings or give individual feedback all of that information is supposed to be collated into a report that comes to us theoretically um towards either mid or in May. And then we as a board have to meet and decide what our recommendation is. Did I get that more or less right, Susan and Beth? So 
that's kind of what we are committing the board to. If there's a concerns within the board as to whether we can do that or not, now would be a good time to hear about it. My concern is, I don't think we can, you can't, it's, we haven't been able to talk about the whole plan because it's too big and there's too many details and too many layers of revisions, et cetera. So I'm wondering if you can distill three or four to possibly hot button issues that we can put to the community for decision around and assume the rest of it is okay. Well, Claire, the mechanism for the board, for the public to provide feedback is not coming from us. It's coming from the CAC and the the neighbor uh, the planning department. So the mechanism. Did you just say the board has to decide how to how we're going to do it? Yes, that's what he said. That's what we have to take that input and decide what our recommendation is. Oh, I see. Well, that's my recommendation. That we invent another process. Someone else. Are you talking, talking about them? educating the board? Never mind. I didn't say anything. Claire, I I agree with you. It's very complex, and it's really hard to digest. I joined the CAC late, and I'm still learning. Um, I made a suggestion today that. I'm not sure where it's going to go, but there are topic area, there's, there are visions around, what is it, six topic areas and goals set within those topic areas. This is all uh, not in stone yet. And then there are policy recommendations. And for me, if I could see that there's a one page in the neighborhood plan that states the vision, the goal, and the policy recommendations for each of those areas. And the areas are economic development, transportation. I've got the book here in front of me, so I'll look at it again. Land use, uh, parks and natural resources, and uh, there's- Economic. Community involvement. Economic. economic. And I think um, it, it needs to be simplified. People that have been working on it, you know, when I first joined it, they were talking about all these code numbers and using all these acronyms, and it's really hard to digest. So uh, I'm hopeful that by the time it comes to the community in that meeting that John was talking about at North Eugene High School, that there will be some way to simplify it because we're going to have people out there who know even less than you do. And I just said we gave that very clear feedback that the the input needs to be practical and it needs to be what the impact is on the residents, not talking about code that's all up in the air and talking like a planner because people will tone out and not pay attention. Michelle has her hand up and then Brenda. Oh, I was one of the original folks on that CAC and headed up the transportation section for quite a while. And um, it's a really, really complex document. I don't know. I, I would say I wouldn't take it to the bank that the city's going to put it into any kind of plain language that's going to be easy for people to do. So just I would, you know, be prepared that that may not happen. I know they're really... Uh, unless things have changed, which I doubt, they're really scarce on resources, on, you know, being able to help out and stuff. So I wouldn't take it to the bank. Michelle, and then I'll throw myself in the queue. Now, excuse me, Brenda, we just heard from Michelle. It seems to me that you're talking about a meeting that's happening at Eugene, but we you also are talking about your next our next general meeting, correct? Oh, it's the topic for our next general meeting. So there's no you don't have to depend on the city. You all can work with Beth's guidance to have Beth help get a very particular, simple. Here are the three talking points that we really want you to be able to see 
if you go to the city meeting, we want you to have that. And it really, it's kind of like the code stuff. It's like, it needs to be, as people said, after that meeting, that was really nice, but I wish you would have given me three talking points that I could have talked about because you helped me. And that's, you can do that for the next meeting. Those of you who've been on it. Then my other question is, what's this Eugene, move Eugene signs that are all around? Isn't that, is that the spinoff that's no longer a part of that? Um, to answer your question, move Eugene is an, an initiative by the transportation department to get feedback on what kind of project should be spent with the bond measure that they pass to uh, improve transportation. It's a totally different project. Okay. Um, theoretically, we could engage in that and we had hoped we'd find time to do that. But uh, I suspect that next month is going to be tied up with this plan. But if you'd say that, that would be really helpful to people like me and perhaps a couple of other people in the community who would think, oh, the transportation, that must be about Max, the 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 fast track bus. And what you're saying is no, it's about no. other stuff. So helping us know that is not what this is, even though there were transportations in both of them. Okay. Yeah, a good point. Back to the neighborhood plan, however, there's there's two levels at which people will want to give input. One is at the high level and a broad feedback. And then there's some people who want to dive into the fact that um, everything in the action plan is a someday, maybe never plan. And the only thing that'll really make a difference, at least in the short run, is what's in the code. And they may want to get into that. It's a very difficult task. There's no doubt about it. You, you, you you have to be able to engage people at the level they want to be engaged. And the intent of the materials that the city is pushing out allows everybody to look at it at a low level, at the high level, and then provide people with the material that if they want to dig down deep and see what's in the details, they can provide feedback too. Jan? Yeah, I uh, appreciate the people who are kind of keeping up with this. and appreciate that there needs to be some kind of a translation for people who don't know what a lot of this stuff means. I mean, that's, I, I think, kind of the, the reason for uh, a meeting, uh, at least it should be, so people can understand what's going on if they don't know all that language. But another item that I think we've touched on uh, now and then with uh, the neighborhood plan is is how Likely is it is it our place or is it a a citizen advocate's place to make comments about what they might think? Is, is any of this ever really ever going to happen? Well, yeah. What's, what's the what's the practical outcome of this? I mean, it's been it's been going on for years longer than it was supposed to, and mm -hmm. uh, and I and I'm only uh, looking at it from the outside, but uh, lots of great ideas, but. Is that part of the part of the discussion too? Is this is this basically worth everybody's time to even mess with us? I understand your concern, Jan. It it might be worth for people who want to know what's really going to change to talk about the few things that actually will be embedded in the code. For example, probably the biggest change that would occur if it makes its way through is that right now anything that's um, community commercial, which is most of the, the um, commercial properties along River Road, is C2. And C2 buildings can be up to 120 feet tall. And I don't think we want 120 feet tall buildings up and down River Road. But um, the city has offered to reduce that maximum level to 60 feet. Now, that may not seem like much, but frankly, that's the biggest gain we're going to get out of this. So the, that kind of stuff, is that what you're asking for? I find that interesting. Um, but but you and Beth and those who have been tracking this, I think people are kind of, whether they know who you guys are, but they're looking for, I think, the neighborhood association somehow, some somebody to explain what the, what the outcome of this thing 
could be. And I think what what you just said. I mean, I I remember knowing something about that, John. I think I think people ought to know about that too. You know, that's if, if that's if, if that's what four years and countless hours of of staff and consultant time and all these meetings. If that's what it all comes down to. Wow, that's a, that's not very impressive, but I'm sure there's more to it than that. Yeah, I, I think it probably is important for the three of us to come together and have some sort of a River Road community organization um, perspective on what our meeting is going to look like. That's a good idea. Yeah. Brenda, your hand is up. Did you want to get back in? No? Okay. Michelle. Um, having done many of those tables at, for the CAC and talked to hundreds of residents, I will tell you about that neighborhood plan. The great majority of them will want to talk to you about things that affect their life. So you really need to make sure if you want things in plain language that you're addressing topics that are meaningful to them. Um, and like the folks that live around North Eugene High School, it's gonna be North Eugene. Uh, there are folks that are you know, dead set against uh, EMX, it's gonna be about EMX. So it's whatever you know, hits people's lives, and affects their day-to-day -day life that they're interested in. And the other thing they're gonna say is, I'm, you know, this is almost approved. You guys are right at, this is at the end stage. So how does my input help? Right. Well, so, the process is that we make recommendations to the planning commission who makes recommendations to the city council who then so approves. That, that's a really good point, John, and just make sure that you stress that to them because in, in other forums that I've been in and stuff that has not been. And okay. people, people get frustrated because they're like, you know, you've already done all this work. Uh, and how does my input about how I feel about, you know, um, I don't know, a bridge over Beltline, how does that, how does that make any difference? You know, I'm not, that decision's already been made. And it makes, it negates then people wanting to uh, participate. And I guess what I heard from what you said, Michelle, is also we need to talk about what it isn't. It's not about how 4J manages North Eugene High School. And it's not about, I forget what the other one you mentioned was, it's not about that either, OMX. So that's that's a good point too, Claire. Um, so originally this was sold as this big comprehensive plan. And what I've picked up from you, John, over the years is that, or the past months anyway, is that, um, it's good. It's been pared down. The only thing that's actually going to happen is very narrow. So I think it might be good to start there and not try to communicate the whole big comprehensive plan, but say we worked, did a lot of work on envisioning these elements. They're not going to go forward at this time. It's really good. We have that discussion in the neighborhood, but here are the main points that, that, you know, and make three main points. I, you know, if you start downloading everything, people are just going to blink out. Yeah. Good points. So, John, maybe uh, you and uh, Susan, and I'd vote for including Michelle in the conversation. We can get together and take a look at what is what are the key points that we want to make for the neighbors for that neighborhood uh, association meeting next month prior to uh, the meeting at North. Okay. I just I'm sorry, I meant to do that as my hand. The only thing I'd add to that, Beth, is we have other members on the CAC from ARCO, and maybe we need to have those folks too, not just the ones Thank on you. the board. Yes, Yeah, absolutely. that would, that would be um, Cameron Ewing and um, Louisa to hear. Yeah, and I can empathize with what people are saying because I worked on, prior to becoming involved in this, I've worked on several plans that have been shelved in the end. And uh, I, so I can't guarantee you that something's going to actually happen with all the yeah. time and money that was spent on this one. What I think this plan did is created a vision for the future that basically it's up to the neighborhood to advocate for. There's no promise from the city that any of it will happen. 
yeah. but at least creates a framework with which we can advocate from. And that's one thing we should probably share. Yeah, yeah I definitely agree. Yeah. So what is that vision for the neighborhood in three? What are three points? Not the whole. I, it's not that piece. simple, Brenda. Yeah, you can't do that. Well, but that's the piece when you're talking to the neighborhood and trying to give them biteable points that Michelle's talking about. You, it is complicated, and I know John can't simplify it, but the rest of you need to help him do that, or it'll be just as overwhelming to a lot of people as our Greenway presentation was. Brenda, what has been done is they've taken each of the major themes and they've come up with three individual points that are most significant, but that's actually 15 points, and I don't think you could make it any fewer than 15. Well, that's why I'm saying we don't need to talk about them all. Let's just talk about the ones that are relevant because it's we're gonna make it. They're gonna just they're gonna decide on it. But if transportation is relevant to you, those three are the ones that are relevant. If natural resources are what's important to you, those are the three that are relevant. But if I the city isn't gonna do anything with those things because they're not gonna invest the resources, then they're not relevant. May I suggest we move on? We're not gonna follow yeah. this. We're already five minutes over and we're just being redundant. Okay, so what I heard was you recommend that those of us who are on the CAC and Michelle get together and form some way of helping explain how this works beyond what we'll get from the city for that meeting in, in May. Okay, yeah. got it. Can you get that information before the first of the month so that we can put it in the newsletter? Um, I'm willing to commit for that meeting. Okay. Can the rest of you meet before the first of May? You can figure that out after the meeting. And did you say that you've already decided this meeting is not going to be? So in the discussion, and thanks for bringing that back, although we're moving next to what are we going to do with the May meeting? That's the last item, almost the last start on the agenda. Um, what staff shared with us, and I'm, I'm not disagreeing, is that doing the session that they've defined in order to give people information and get feedback, um, it, it can barely be done in a group with enough time. And finding a way to ask people to engage in that through Zoom, it's better to ask them to go ahead and do that same process on their own and mail in their feedback to the city. They'll still be incorporated. Is that an accurate representation, Beth and Susan? But if trying to have breakout sessions and have people have that conversation, when we're already broken out into six or eight tables where we're having that discussion in person, it doesn't seem feasible. But there is going to be a um, another session that's specifically designed to be done via Zoom, where if people want to engage, they can engage at that place. It's just not going on at the same time as what these North Eugene High School and the two neighborhood meetings are going to be like. And, and I, I don't have an answer, Brenda. I think they're right. If I were here, I would argue that we could have a breakout room and get that information, but I can't, you know, you, you all don't want to do that. I just want us to be clear and start communicating to the, like on the website soon, that it's not going to be a hybrid meeting if it's not going to be a hybrid meeting. I think we need to be honest with people and not surprise them a week or two before the meeting, if we've already made that decision. Understood. And I, I would say it's not that we don't want to do it. We don't know how to do it. We don't have the resources. We don't have the human resources to make that happen. And so you've made that's this. Essentially it. And, and that's a fine thing to just communicate it that way. Okay. But the decision is it will be a not high. It will not be on Zoom that meeting. It will just be in person. You'll have a lot better time. Well, you know, I think what we could decide if we want to as, as our board is that we will have it be broadcast over Zoom. We just won't be taking feedback from the people who are there and we'll encourage them to use the, the same tool to do it on their own. 
but you had we had so much trouble getting the sound to work i'd suggest that you just skip it and keep it simple and go back because of the value of this meeting focus on the meeting okay you, you don't have i'm just saying if i were here i might be arguing differently but if i'm not there there's one person on zoom that's not going to be there and the others of you need to do the me meeting okay we'll we'll make that decision um i don't know which way to go the city doesn't want us to have the zoom component um maybe we just should and and point people to that other meeting which what, is designed to work on zoom what the city said is all city meetings are now hybrid and we are encouraged the river the communities to do the same that's what they said on saturday that's true but this is specifically designed to get feedback on a plan and that's different from having a city council meeting you guys we've had enough back back and forth on this you're going to make a decision we're going to let us know end of story okay so um this next discussion has pretty much been made unfortunately but um maybe it's more to talk about what we're not going to do if we spend our may meeting talking about the neighborhood plan i don't think we have a choice that means that we won't be able to provide any feedback through the neighborhood meeting on move, move eugene because their deadline is in may so that's off the table um there's been a request to bring County Commissioner Seneca back. We can always do that in a later meeting. Um, and then finally, we had a request that we redo the public safety levy portion of April's general meeting. Um, that will be moved after May because the election will be held. So basically, we talked about what we're going to do. We just defined three things or what we weren't going to do. We just defined three things we aren't going to do. So we're making progress in a weird sort of way. We're letting those go. Any concerns? And, and move Eugene be part of the e-newsletter and I can put it on the website without any opposition? Certainly, I think that's a good idea. Yeah. Everyone else agrees. I think that we could also uh, post the, the commentary that the committee made about the levy as well. Good, though we should give that same opportunity to the county. Right. I would suggest that we've already done that by posting the city council discussion on that, where both of them were in the same place for an hour. And I think you mean city club. Yeah. Excuse me, city club. I think that we've done that. Okay. So that presentation was covered it by, yeah. Yeah. Although we could point people to it and they could in yeah. the newsletter. Let's do that. Let's just say, go here for that conversation. Sorry, folks. Okay. So are we good with May's meeting? Mm -hmm. Okay, Claire, you've got debrief the neighborhood conference. For five I minutes. think we should just write up a couple paragraphs and, and email it out. It is 8.55. Yeah. Without objection, we will drop this from the agenda and carry it on via, uh, an, there should be a message coming out about the pertinent stuff that we heard from the city anyway. So we'll tag on that assuming they send it out. Are you talking well, about the neighborhood plan pertinent stuff or from the meeting that we went to? We're talking about the meeting that we went to. Okay. Fabio said he would send out the results of the surveys. Right. That should be very interesting. Um, 1,200 people participated in a survey about the neighborhoods. They disaggregated those 50 people from River Road who participated and they have information for us to look at about what they like and don't like about what we do. Jan, we're about to close out. Is there something we need to know? Yeah, this is a a uh, an item, not a not an immediate action item. I would like to uh, propose that we do a a neighborhood event in August in the Greenway, and I can write up something and email it to everybody. I'd like to see a promenade where we go out and, and we can have tables and we can make a nice event out of it. I'll be back and, and be able to take the lead on putting that together. So 
I'll write up a proposal and send it out on email to everybody. Thanks, Jan. Yeah. Good an idea. Out, an outdoor fun event. Yeah. Very good. We got a lot done, everybody. Once again, let's figure out how to do less. <laughs> thanks for your patience, everybody, and for your support. Uh, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. Right. Thank you. Thank you again, Claire, for all your years. Thank yep. Thanks, Claire. All right. Thanks, See you everybody. Soon. Bye.